See, I was okay. I know. If you ever want to stop me, just do so because you got me going now. Um, there's definitely numerology in it, no question about it. And it's it's not just me thinking that. It's made extremely explicit. Uh, Stephen King even puts in the mouth of it that it is thinking in terms of the mystical power of numbers. Right. It's it's right there. So I, I kind of played with the idea that, well, um, I mean, there's many concepts that people call numerology. So, for instance, some people say there's biblical numerology by which they merely mean eh, in the Bible – certain numbers seem to mean certain things seven is perfection six is man things like that then the rabbinic jews their mystical kabbalism took it a step further and said well since hebrew letters are also numbers we can do calculations and we can actually derive interpretations based on numbers hmm. whereas what's generally known as uh, occult forms of numerology is a whole different story this is the concept that certain numbers can tap into or manifest different energies right hmm. so you might change your name so that it numerically adds up to 11 or something like that right and so i was thinking maybe uh the two and the seven if you do what's called reduction which is you add numbers uh, until you get one number two and the seven would be nine and some people view nine as the number of the beast because six 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 would equal eighteen and one plus eight equals nine. Oh, it's also three three three, which is Crowley's numeration for I won't even name it, but the what the high higher demon was three three three, so that would be nine. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. So for instance, um In the novel, there's also many usages of the number 13. Okay, now, I did some of this in the book, is tracking down the number of times it used the number 27 and 13, and also 7, because it is put into the mouth of it that 7 has a, a special mystical power to it. And how many kids were, were there? How many protagonists? It's 7 kids. Right. So, let me see. There's a, a book written by Stephen King called uh, Blockade Billy, and it's about a baseball player. And what is the number on the back of the baseball player's jersey? It's 13. Uh -huh. Now, I'm going to quote to you from Stephen King's official website. The number 13 is a magical number in the Dark Tower novels. And Billy and blockade Billy it's Billy's shirt number so there it is see I don't have to invent that <laughs> it's on Stephen King's official website that the number 13 is a magical number and in, in his other tales and so when it manifests as the teenage werewolf guess what's on the back of the school jerseys or the uh, school jacket 13 mm -hmm. So I like things like that because I can prove that I'm not just making up stuff. <laughs> One other thing, um, I know we're wrapping it up. Another aspect of, say, when a novel is made into a, a movie is what the director will throw into it, how, what they will make of it, how they change it, or what they'll add. And For instance, one thing I noticed is in the movie – there's a bar mitzvah scene because the Stan character is Jewish mm. and there's a there's an elaborate bar mitzvah scene which includes uh, deleted scenes that are very revealing but that is absolutely absent from the novel it just doesn't exist so that was just contrived completely contrived by the director to and so in my mind he's doing that to make a point well, I ended up writing an entire chapter just about the bar mitzvah scene and what I managed to read into it. Mm -hmm. And so in the, I wanted to read you a quote that I found you'll find very telling because in the last movie, there's just a little clip from a, a movie, a, a, a song by the band called the cult. Mm -hmm. The song is called love removal machine. 
And they just play a little fragment of it in the movie, but here's uh, some relevant lyrics from that song. Fell to the red room because she was there, a scarlet woman. Now I am in fear. She said, do all those things that you do to me. Do you know what I mean? Do all those things that you do to me. Love removal machine. Baby, 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 I fell from the sky. Hmm. Oh, yesterday, you blew my mind. Oh, yeah, having trouble with my direction. Upside down, psychotic reaction. Oh! (laughs) Whoa! I mean, you got Scarlet Woman falling from the sky, being traumatized at being in, in the same room with this person. Mm-hmm. A reference to a some kind of high tech device that is love removal. I mean, come on. In Red Room. Red Room. Um, that's also in Twin Peaks. Oh, that's from The Shining. Red Room. Murder backwards. Oh, oh I see. Oh, this is a Red Room. Yeah, but it's the same. But it's definitely Rum, a yes. reference. Yeah. So. Oh no, I'm. I'm. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, upside down, right? Your reality's toppled. Psychotic react. Come on! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd enjoy. It. Well, I don't know if I'd enjoy, it, but I thought you'd find that interesting. Hmm. All right. So, Bar Mitzvah is is Stan Jewish in the novel, or is, did they change? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So in, they kept... in, in the novel, he is. Uh, don't ask me why again why Stephen King writes some of the things he does but in the novel yeah he's definitely Jewish although I mean I wouldn't nowhere near Orthodox right Hmm. Um, more like uh, genetically Jewish Um, but when he commits suicide the way uh, King describes the wounds is that he ends up, quote, with crosses slashed into his forearms. Hmm. Again, don't ask me why, but that's what he wrote. So the Jewish kid ends up dying by slashing crosses into his forearms. And then he uses his own blood to write the word it on the bathroom wall only to have his poor beloved wife go up there and finding him like that way you know horrendous have you been watching the outsider just quickly the outsider uh, it's the stephen is hbo it's based on stephen king again it's very good actually i have to say uh, yeah. just in, aesthetically speaking no. it's very well done um no and it's also about i, I haven't got into it enough to know but it's supernatural and it seems to be about an entity who can um a shapeshifter so he can change his form to look like uh, uh, other human beings and then commit terrible acts so uh, I might have to check it out you know well one thing I did watch recently is on Netflix they put out a three part series each part is about an hour and a half called Dracula yeah I watched that too okay now were you blown away by the ending well, I, I wouldn't say I was blown away. I was, I, I was certainly struck by the propagandist elements of it. I could say. I mean, it was clearly trying to communicate something. Um, yeah. But yeah. So in that sense, I was struck by it. Yeah. I mean, the the ending was so abstract that the person I watched it with said, "What was that?" Yeah, exactly. And I told him, "Remember what I was just telling you a few days ago." which is that this whole stuff about uh, gender fluidity, it's deeply rooted in the occult. Mm. Uh, There's absolutely no question about that. I published a book called On the Occult Roots of Post-Genderism. And it's just quote after quote after quote, and occult material is saturated with this concept that the ultimate God and therefore the ultimate human is a combination of the two genders or sexes. Yeah. And I said, that's what's going on. I, you know, I hate to ruin it for a spoiler alert. Spoiler like, alert. I, have to well, say, but... I think they spoil their own show is my feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, th- this is what's going on at the end of Dracula. Um, there's so many aspects of it that make it clear that what's happening is uh, the ultimate unification. Yeah, but not in a divine way. Uh, uh, no. No. 
the count the counterfeit well sure i mean it's it's uh alchemy it's alchemical it's the ultimate alchemical wedding really yeah dracula and van helsing yeah. well i mean yeah including what what is okay so we're right back to the concept of gnosticism death being salvation a meaning hmm. Uh, removal from the physical realm into the spiritual realm because Dracula's ultimate salvation was dying. Yeah, it turns out that that's the one thing he's afraid of is death. Exactly, <laughs> right. And, and the, if you remember, um, he had been asked about why he fears the cross and he had said because in, in, in this particular rendition, when he consumes blood, he also acquires the memories yeah. of the people, right? So... Well, he said, well, it's just because I've consumed so much blood from peasants who feared the uh, Catholic oppressors and this and that. Yeah. But it turns out, no, no, that's not the case, as Mrs. or Ms. Van Helsing tells him. Yeah. Another um, aspect of gender reversals, by the way, Van Helsing yeah. being uh, always depicted as a male character is not being depicted as a female character, which Netflix does on a different show, by the way. Anyhow, yeah. so she explains to him the reason you fear the cross is because you fear death, but the cross represents life, um, life and giving in to that death for life, right? right? Yeah. Um, she doesn't mention the name of Jesus, but I mean, it's crystal clear. She's talking about Jesus as somebody who was courageous enough to face his own death. Hmm. And that's why he, uh, Dracula feared it. He feared death, so he, he sought life through traumatically murdering others. He feared the sun which we find out was for literally no reason because it didn't harm him. He just thought it did because he had consumed so much blood of people who believed in folklore uh, to the effect that it would. Right, I guess so. And, and of course the son is also rendered female in the narrative. Not that well, that's, the son has okay. a sex, but you know, they, they so inverted no, the tradition. Right, if you remember, he, Van Helsen exposes him to the son and he's falls on the floor writhing in pain but yeah. then realizes well wait a minute nothing's happening to me sure yeah and that was the twist ending i know but they, they didn't right. actually explain that did they they didn't actually explain why he but i guess you're right that would probably be the reason he'd just been he'd, he'd fallen for the, his own the fictions that had been oh, created no, it's, around him yeah it's it stated to him quite clearly that that's why he feared the sun even though it didn't actually harm him it's stated there explicitly, but you're right about the role reversal because generally the the masculine would represent the sun and the feminine would represent the moon. But yeah. here it's really Dracula representing the night and its moon with Van Helsing being the day, the day and its sun. Yeah. And that's the, the ultimate chemical wedding at the end of that is the, the male human and the you know well if you want to call it regular human the, the male person the female person combining the day and the night combining the sun and the moon combining all towards the such a the combination that's so transcendent that it leads to death and that's his ultimate uh enlightenment literal enlightenment from the sun right yeah and fire <laughs> and fire <laughs> yeah well it's hard you know it had good intentions I think in the attempt to redeem Dracula in that way but uh, there's many a slip between the cup and the lip as they say because I thought the execution was, was just just a, a total mess in that regard perhaps because it wasn't based in any real understanding you know, of theological principles just a kind of new agey mishmash of identity politics and occultism exactly and those two are 